Okay, so we're going to now try and connect together some of the things we did for exercise 10a to exercise 10b. And we're going to come across some of these trigonometric angle laws. Now, if you can memorize these three things that we've got down here, you will find chapter 10 very, very straightforward. If you don't memorize these things, you're going to find it very difficult. So I'm going to start off by looking at this one. Actually, you may have come across this when you did exercise 10a. You may have seen it in this form, though. You may have seen that sine theta is the same as sine of 180 minus theta. So let's actually show that. Let's um, let's do it with x though as our degrees. So I'm going to draw our diagram with our circle that we usually do and this time I'm going to put in x degrees as some acute angle that we've got here and then I'm going to try and draw in 180 minus x. So 180 would be over here but I'm coming back x degrees that I have. So that actually means I'm going to be at this point and I've come back x degrees. So the angle 180 minus x, which I will do in black here, is this bit, which is 180 minus x. And what you should notice for both of these is that the sine of x and the sine of 180 minus x is exactly the same as each other. So you can see in this case that the sine of x is the same as the sine of 180 minus x. Well, let's just try that with some values to show you that it's true. Why not use the ones we had on the previous page? In fact, let's do the sine of 30 degrees. Now, hopefully you can remember that the sine of 30 degrees is a half. And we're saying that that's going to be the same as the sine of 180 minus 30, which is just the sine of 150 degrees. Let's check that that is true. Let's clear this. So we know the sine of 30 is a half, but let's just prove that there. And let's also do the sine of 150. That's a half too. So we could work that out without our calculator. Now, let's just think about why this is true from the graph. If I go to the graph for a second, you can see that sine of 30 is 0.5. We've had to travel from zero 30 degrees in this direction. The other place that has a value of a half is over here which appears to be at 180 coming backwards 30 degrees. So this bit to kind of get to the value of 150 is because of the symmetrical property of this bump of the graph. Whatever the value is here, you come along 30 to find the other place where it meets at that line, you're coming backwards 30. Hence, this bit is referring to starting at 180 and coming back x degrees. This bit here is our x degrees, so we have that the sine of x is the same as the sine of 180 minus x. Please, please, please memorize that. The next one I want to have a look at is the cosine. Now for cosine, we have got that the cos of x is equal to the cos of 360 minus x. So I'm going to come back to my cast type diagrams that I have over here. And my first one is going to be x that I have here. And then the next one is going to be 360. So 360 is a full loop. But this time we're coming backwards x because we're subtracting x, which means that our line is going to end up with somewhere over here. I guess I could have put this on a circle. I'm so bad at drawing circles on here. And remember, cosine is how far the line goes across. And you can see that for both of them, they come across the same amount. OK, so this shows me that they both have positive values. It shows me that cos of x, let's go to my blue color that I've got here, that cos of x is the same as the cos of 360 minus x. Well, let's think of one of those other ones that we know about. We know that the cos of 30, well, you should try and remember this from the previous page, the sine of 30 is a half, so the cos of 30 must be root 3 over 2. That seems to suggest that it will be the same as the cos of 360 minus 30, which is the cos of 330. Let's check what the cos of 330 is on our calculator. Um, so the cos of 330. Uh, now it doesn't come up exactly as root 3 over 2 here. Let's see if I can press SD. Yep, there it is. It is root 3 over 2, so they are the same. Now graphically, why is that true? Why is it repeating um, at those two points there? So the cos of 30 degrees, let's draw it onto the graph. Let's go in red this time. Is somewhere up here and it's referring to this value that we have. Now if I draw a line across at this bit 
Let's hope it straightens it out for me. Good. You can see that the other place that it comes in is at 330. Not perfect, just because I haven't drawn it very well. So to get to this value that we had here, we came 30 degrees across. But to get to the other value where it meets over here, we go to the end point, which is 360, and we come 30 degrees backwards. So this one over here is our 30 degrees. This is our 360 coming back 30 degrees. In other words, this is our x degrees, and this is our 360 minus x. Hence, cos of x is the same as the cos of 360 minus x. And then the last one that we've got here is that sine and cos repeat every 360 degrees, but tan every 180 degrees. So I'm just going to highlight that one as the one that we're going to be looking at here. And actually, I'm only going to be looking at this first section, which is about sine and cos repeating every 360 degrees. You already know this from chapter nine about tan. Now, the way that we can think about this from our cast type diagrams that we've got here is whatever the angle is, if it's x, if you are to add on 360 degrees to this, you would come all the way around and you'd come back to where you started. So the cosine would remain exactly the same and the sine would remain exactly the same for when you add on 360 degrees. Um, if you were gonna be thinking about that for the tan, well, remember tan is referring to the gradient of the line. It says it repeats every 180 degrees. If you add 180 degrees to it, you end up over here. And you can clearly see that the gradient of both of these lines here and here are the same as each other. So these cast diagrams show that sine and cos, they repeat every 360 degrees. And this one is that tan repeats every 180 degrees. I should really say it repeats every 180 degrees. And I thought I'd show you it on a graph as well. So you should be able to identify whether this is the sine or the cos graph. Well, look, it starts at zero. So this is an example of a sine, sine theta or sine x in this particular case. This is a graph y equals sine x degrees. And I've got here, this is 30 degrees and it's corresponding to that value of a half. Now you can see 360 degrees later, you get to exactly that same point of uh, a half. And if you add on another 360 degrees, you also get a half. So this is just a kind of graphical representation of showing how often the sine and cos graph repeat each other. If you remember the tan graph, it repeats every 180 degrees. So these three rules are gonna be really, really useful. And what we're gonna do in the next video is we're gonna do some calculations without using a calculator, okay?